The charcoal filter also found within the filter gallery is a fun filter to apply. It creates a stylized effect that can be used to make an image appear to be hand-drawn. This is one of those filters we talked about earlier in the lecture that is dependent upon the foreground and background colors on the tools panel. You can see this clearly from the two examples on the side. The first example is, a gr is green because the foreground color in our document was green. The second result is black because we changed the foreground color to black. The default result of the charcoal filter isn't too bad. It creates a pleasing stylized effect, but it still looks a little generic. Painting on the layer mask created by the smart filter allows some of the color from the original image to start showing through. We didn't want to wipe away all the hand-drawn texture, so instead of painting with a solid brush set to 100% opacity, we used a soft edge brush set to a low opacity. Slowly, we drew strokes across the image um, as we allowed more and more of the original image to appear. And so you can see the different stages of what we were doing. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, it almost looks photorealistic on the buildings, but you can see that the trees and the grass still look like they're hand drawn. Um, maybe some combination between the first image and that last image is, is where it would work best for you. If we jump over to Photoshop, I will show you how we did that. And so, as always, duplicate your background layer, and then I recommend making it a smart object. So I will right click it and choose to convert to a smart object. We applied the charcoal filter, but before I do that, I'm going to change the color. Let's make it, let's make it dark green. Mm, let's make it dark orange, or that's more brown. Uh, when I go to the filter menu and the filter gallery, and I choose charcoal, so I'll choose it from this drop down over here, you will quickly see that the foreground color affects the color of the charcoal drawing. And so if I was to select OK right now, which first I'm going to get rid of that fresco, we don't want that. When I select OK and I apply the charcoal filter, you can see that all the brush strokes make it appear that it was drawn not with charcoal, but with, I guess, a chalk pastel that's dark brown. And so if that's not the look you're going for, when you apply this filter, I'll hit undo, you must first change the foreground color to the color that you do want it to be. And maybe that's very, very dark, or maybe it's just a dark shade of gray, whatever works for your needs but you should know that it's dependent upon that foreground color. And so if we go back to filter and filter gallery, and now we apply the same filter, you can see that it will apply it in black. And so when I select OK, it, it looks pretty good, uh, but it also it looks stock. And when you just apply a filter as is in Photoshop, it almost comes across like you don't really know what you're doing in Photoshop, but you just know how to hit a button and apply an effect. And so one of the ways that you can kind of enhance your pictures or make them look a little bit more personalized is to edit the layer mask that it's attached to the smart filter. And you can do that in a number of ways. And so one of the ways is to apply a gradient. And so if I select the gradient tool and I have black and white as my foreground and background color and then on the options bar I can see that my gradient is going to fade from white to black and it's radial. If I apply this on the filter, or I'm sorry, on the layer mask, it will allow some, well that was I guess too much, some of the image to show through while others will still remain um, as applied to the filter. And actually, I was just doing this to show you how that would work, but I kind of really like that, where the entire image on the outside looks like it's realistic, but the building looks like it's been hand drawn. In our example, however, that's not what we did. So we're going to undo that until we get back to an image that doesn't have any uh, um, layer mask applied. Instead, we're going to hand paint on the layer. So if you grab your paintbrush and you switch your foreground color to black because when you paint, paint with black on a layer mask, that's what makes things disappear. You can paint on the image to allow some of the original color to show through. And so I have a soft brush. If we come up to the options bar at the top of the screen, you can see that the hardness is set to 51. The size is 600 because this is a big image. And the opacity is set relatively low at 23. And so if I wanted to, I could just come through and bring some of the color back into the image slowly. You can see that if I paint on the grass, some of the grass color comes back. The benefit of this is that you can still see the texture. If we zoom in here, you can still see the texture of the charcoal on the grass down here, but you can also see the color coming through. And so you can create a combination effect that has your stock filter, your charcoal applied, but you're also customizing the look. And so maybe just everything around the building becomes in color because maybe it's like um, like the Wizard of Oz and everything that like Dorothy touches comes back into color. And so 
the foreground maybe is all in color, but the background is still in black and white.